Hi, in this video, we are going to look at how to use the SimTest analytics. Now, you might be somebody who has appeared for your first test on my IMS. And you must be wondering what are the things that I should be doing after I have taken the test? What are the things that will be visible to me? And how am I supposed to analyze the whole test? So in this video, we are going to cover all these details. Let's get started. So to illustrate this, I'm going to take an example. So I'm going to use pre-SimCat1 and show you how the analytics is going to appear. Of course, a lot of things will be similar for other tests that you will see on my IMS. Now, the first thing that you will do after you have taken the test is go to the test tab and under that you have multiple options such as within CAT, you have pre and proctored SimCat, you have SimCat take home, module test and so on. As and when you take test, all of those details will start getting populated here. Now here you can see in pre and proctored SimCat, I have appeared for pre SimCat 1 and it will show you the total score and the sectional score that you have got. So here you can see I've got a score of 105 and it will give me the split. It will also give me my percentile, the overall percentile and the sectional percentile that I've obtained. At the end of this, you will see there are two options. The first option, which is which looks like a graph, it gives you the detailed analytics. Next to that, you have review test. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is the review test part of it, and then we'll come to analytics. So after you've taken the test, the first thing that you should be doing is reviewing the test that you have taken. So let me click on that and show you what happens next. Now, as you can see on screen, after I clicked on the review button, it basically opens the entire test for me. What I can do from here is look at all the sections and within each of the sections, I can figure out which are the questions that I got correct, incorrect and which were the skipped ones. I will also be able to see my overall scorecard. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is the overall scorecard. So when you click on that, you will see your attempts and how many questions you got correct and then the score that you obtained in each of the sections. So now, as you can see on screen, there are two drop downs. The first drop down says all and within that it says correct, incorrect or skipped. So this is basically the category of question. So if I click on correct, it will show me all the questions that I attempted and I got correct. If I click on skipped, it will show me all the questions that I have skipped. The second drop down is for the sections. So whether it is VARC or DILR or QA, if I want to analyze a particular section, I'll be able to do that. So for example, in this case, I've chosen correct and quantitative ability and it will show me all the questions that I've got correct. Now, once I scroll down, you'll be able to see the statistics, the video solution and the text solution for the same. Now, if you go back to the top, let me change it to incorrect. So here it will show me all the questions that I got incorrect. As you can see, there is one question that I got incorrect in this particular test. I had spent one minute on this particular question. Let me go to skip questions. So if I go to the skip ones, I'll be able to see that, okay, this question I spent 14 seconds. I spent, let's say 57 seconds on another question. And I'll also be able to see the video solution of that particular question. So how to use this in the best possible way? Let's say you have taken the test now and you are on the review page. Whatever questions that you have skipped or the ones that you have got incorrect, ideally you should make an effort to solve those questions again. Let's understand where you have made mistakes. So if let's say there are some questions that you got wrong, while solving it again, you will be able to realize that, okay, this is the mistake that I made. Or if let's say there's a question that you got correct, but you look at the video solution and you understand that your solution was not the best solution. And of course, the questions that you skipped you'll have to figure out what was the reason. Was it a content issue? Was it the speed issue? Because of which you were not able to solve that question. Now, let me click on analytics and show you how the test analytics appears. Now, once you click on analytics, there are multiple things that you're going to see. The first one is going to be the scorecard. And on the scorecard, you'll be able to see all the sections that are part of that particular test and the percentile that you have obtained at an overall level and at the sectional level. The next thing that you're going to see, which is very, very important is the percentile mapper. So it will show you at what score, what is the percentile that somebody can get in a particular section and at the overall level. For example, in this case, a score of 22 corresponds to 70 percentile on the VRC section. Whereas if you look at overall, a score of 80 corresponds to 85 percentile. So we have given benchmark figures for 70, 85, 90. 95, 99 and the 99.5 percentile. If you scroll down further, there's one more important thing that you're going to see, 
which is going to be the category wise cutoffs because a lot of IMs have different requirements when it comes to different categories and that is why based on the eligibility of these IMs, we have given the data that is required. So let's understand how to read the category wise cutoffs that we have given. Now here you will be able to see categories on the left hand side and then you will see four columns VRC, DLR, QA and overall. Now in each of them there are two parts that are given, the percentile and the score equivalence of that. So let's say you are a general candidate. Now general candidate typically the requirement across IMs which is the minimum sectional requirement is typically 85 percentile at the sectional level and 95 overall. So the scores that you should be targeting in this particular test would have been 30 in VRC, 33 in DLR and 27 in QA overall being 103. So if you have let's say cleared all the sectional cutoffs you should be happy about it but if there is any particular section where, where you have not cleared the sectional cutoff then you should start thinking what went wrong in this particular test, how can I improve in this particular section in the next test that I am going to take. The next thing that is available under analytics is the area wise analytics. If you click on that, this is how it will appear. On the left hand side, you will be able to see the name of the section and within that, the broad area has been given to you. For example, in VARC, we have given two parts to it, reading comprehension and verbal reasoning. Now under reading comprehension, you got 21 marks and in verbal reasoning you got 10 marks. The number of questions in each of these areas was 16 and 8 and you attempted 11 and 8 questions respectively. In accuracy it will give you the percentage accuracy that you have obtained, the time that you spent in solving the questions of that particular area and then the marks per minute. So it's a very beautiful metric to look at because what it tells you is that for every minute that you are spending in let's say the VRC section, you are essentially getting 0.78 marks. You want this figure to be as high as possible. So from area, we move to the next thing which is question wise analysis. Now in question wise analysis, you are going to get data at a question level. On the right hand side, you have a drop down and in that drop down, let me choose numbers for example. And what it will show me is how many questions from numbers first of all appeared and the statistics for each of those questions. So as you can see the first question which is the lift of a building so that's the question stem that is given to you. I spent 14 seconds on this particular question. The status of the question is that I have skipped it. The next thing that it will show me is the toppers time. So how much time the toppers are spending on this particular question and that is 2 minutes and a few seconds. There are two more columns which are very very important which is toppers attempt and toppers accuracy. If you look at toppers attempt and this is a percentage figure, it is telling you that out of the toppers of this particular test, 62% of the toppers attempted this particular question. Toppers accuracy is showing that the toppers of the test, 94% of the people who attempted, they are getting it right. Now when you multiply these two things, it gives you a very nice interesting data point and that helps us in classifying the question. So if you look at the toppers attempt and toppers accuracy, we multiply these two things and using that we tell you whether the question was easy, moderate or difficult. So the categorization that we do is A, B, C. A is an easy question, B is moderate question and C is a difficult question. For example, if you look at this particular question, the first one, right, toppers attempt is 62%, toppers accuracy is 94%. I can technically multiply these two figures and get a number though that number is not important because we have already done the categorization for you. So we are telling you upfront that this is a category B question, it is a moderate question. But if you look at the other ones, look at for example the last question, right? Toppers accuracy is 84, toppers attempt is 18% only. So out of the toppers only 18% of the students are actually attempting this particular question. And because of this, the categorization is C. That means it's a difficult question. I should definitely feel happy about my attempt because I solved it and I got it right. But it is not something that I should be doing in the first round of question solving that I'm doing. My focus has to be on the A category questions. So let me go to some other area and see if we have something which is A category. I just moved to arithmetic as the area. And as you can see, there are a lot of A category questions. And why is that? If you look at the first question, 98% of the toppers are attempting it. 98% of the toppers are getting it right. So definitely this is an easy question, right? Because a lot of people are attempting it and people are attempting it correctly. So this is an A category question. 
So this is the analysis that you will be able to do for each and every question that is there on the test. If I go to RC for example, it tells me that a particular question was easy, a particular question was moderate or it was difficult. So the question wise analysis is a very important thing that you should be incorporating in your analysis. And that brings us to the last thing which is question selection analysis. So what this does is it looks at all the questions in the test and categorizes them as of course ABC that we have done on the question wise analysis but it gives you a summary of that. So how to read this? Now at an overall level as you can see in category A 25, 3 and 4. So there were 32 questions that are easy in this particular test. Out of these 32 questions I got 25 correct, I got 3 incorrect and 4 skipped. So these are the questions that I should ideally have got correct. Then of course moderate category B. There were total of 22 questions split as 9 correct for me, 3 incorrect for me and 10 skip questions. Ideally what should happen is that you should have a lot of questions from A category that you have got correct. You should have least number of questions that are C category and that you are attempting and getting incorrect. So you have to look at this and understand how you are attempting whether you are selecting the right set of questions that are available. The focus should be to do more A category questions and B category questions and you should not be spending a lot of time on the C category questions. So using a combination of the question wise analysis and question selection you will be able to improve on your question selection in the subsequent test. So that brings us to the end of this particular video. I hope you have found this useful and you will be incorporate these techniques that we discussed in your analysis. Using that you will be able to derive more benefit from the exercise of taking test. Thanks for watching. Wish all of you all the best.